just run through a bunch of emails from you guys, lars.christiansandautodesk.com, and hopefully some of this uh, is valuable to you, and you can use that in your endeavor with Fusion 360. That's the goal. Hope you're doing well. Life is good. Let's get into it. So the first email is from Hans Peter Christiansen's. Christiansen? Sounds very Danish, huh? Um, hi, Lars. Love your videos. Thank you so much. Um, and can you recreate an interactive version of a Haboy? See, if, if you send me something and I cannot pronounce it, Hyperbolord. Hyperbol. Let's get into this. Uh, because I actually, with this, we also got a Vicky, uh, Pedia page. <laughs> and, um, so can we create something that is something like this, uh, inside of Fusion 360? <sighs> Hans Peter, I don't know why you want to do this. And I probably have to admit that, um, you know, when, when in high school they were going over this, I was probably not paying attention. Um, but pretty much, uh, hyper, hyper Ballard, hyper, I don't know, however you pronounce it. Um, well, um, somewhat we can do something inside of, uh, inside of Fusion. Now, um, Hans Peter has actually, uh, attempted this to do it himself. A quick image he sent me, um, of trying to create something, something like that. Now, I think where you're getting a little bit caught up is using um components and and bodies um because this is again where we are stretching fusion to what fusion is really meant to do because what few what mechanical cat i should say mechanical cat inventor fusion SolarWorks, what they're really good at is to give you the end result um the, the end product that you need to do. So when, as soon as you start trying to do kind of like uh, animations or there's other software that can do that. For example, when we're looking at this image of this thing here uh, spinning around, then um, then that's not done in, in mechanical CAD software. That's done in some kind of other animation. But anyways, let's let's at least jump into this and let me give it, you know, Remember, I didn't pay attention to this in school, but let's, admit, let's talk a little bit about it. So um, I'm going to start out with creating a sketch and on the face here, see for circle. And let's make this 100, 100 uh, millimeters um, and that sketch. So now we have a sketch down here. I'm going to go ahead and do a offset plane. Um, and, uh, and let's make that, drag this up on the arrow. Let's make it like 150. So that's up there. Let's create a uh, another sketch on that. See for circle and kind of do the same thing, right? Um, I made it 100. Okay. So um, so now we have these two circles. Now, um, so so I just wanted my point about making the end result so something that looks like this, uh, hyperbole or however you pronounce it, of one sheet. Um, we could do something like that inside of Fusion very easily in the sense that now if we went in and we created another sketch, let's finish this sketch, let's create a third sketch. I'm just going to sketch on the side view here um, and let's do a P for project. So let's project this circle and this circle here. Hit OK so we kind of get the endpoints. And we could do something like a spline from here and then I'm going to put make a midpoint somewhere over here. And, um, and then an endpoint there. So now we have a free point spline, D for dimension, and we could place this one, this midpoint here at uh, the middle between our plane. So this is gonna be in the middle of our two big circles. And then we could also kind of define the, the, the width of it here. So let's make that 15. And that is now, that is now kind of like fully defined spline sitting sitting like that now if we went now and did an o for offset on that and let's bring it in like minus a couple of millimeters maybe um now if we went in and did a revolve of this around the center line hit okay then as far as i know without spending too much 
you know, remember, you're hitting the limit of my brain cells here. That is a hyperboloid or whatever, whatever, however you pronounce it um, here. And I believe so. Um, and down in the common area, if if you disagree now to Hans Christians um, or Hans Peter, Hans Peter Christensen wants a interactive one. Um, and I, I think from my perspective, again, Mechanical CAD is really meant to give you the end result. So if this is one of those, then this is the end result. But you could, in sense, if we just delete, let's delete the last two things. So we just have the, the circles. If we go into the first circle um, and we use something like a point, let's gonna snap a point to the circle here and let's give it a dimension. And let's make that something, doesn't matter. We make it 35, remember that? Let's go into the, so there's that point. Let's go to the top circle and do the same thing. Let's do a point, but let's make sure we place that somewhere else and give that a dimension. Like that. And let's just for easy make that 45. Finish that. So now we kind of have these two different points. And, um, and now if we said, let's create another sketch on this face here. And if you have that 3D sketch area on there, um, if we go in here and we create a line, just out in space, you could use the coincident to snap this one to each of these points, right? And now you have a line that is interactive with those dimensions that we used to where to place these points. And I'm not quite sure I, I honestly, I don't even know if this, and don't forget we have parameters, so we could we could now start being creative and kind of uh, drive um, these these two, this 35 and this 45 with a uh, with another, you know, with parameters and somehow make them interactive. Um, but looking online, it looks like that this, if you had a if you had a, some other ones of these, you could start creating surfaces between them and that may be how you you kind of do that so um i think i feel like um that i'm hitting somewhere in the middle right like when i'm looking at at, at this animation here trying to understand this it looks like that the top point is stationary and the bottom point is is kind of like spinning around so if i go in and i and and again Hence, Peter, you, you call my bluff. So if we go in to the bottom one, what we could do is we can go into that bottom sketch right there, right click and say uh, show dimension so we can see the dimension. So there is our, our 35. And now if we started changing that, you know, to 15, we are kind of getting, you know, that, uh, that movement, right? Um, to whatever, whatever, that is so in that sense hope that makes sense i hope that was not a waste of your time um <laughs> me just trying to answer some emails if you like it thumbs up if you don't be honest thumbs down i love your comments and if you have something to add to this um do it put it in there if you haven't subscribed to the channel love if you do that too um my laptop just went to sleep